Glory to God. So this month, I'm really speaking, the focus of our teaching this month is how the Spirit leads and guides. It's how the Holy Spirit leads and guides. And it's very powerful. So in this service today, I'm going to lay foundation. And in the other teachings, we're going to kind of build on it. How the Spirit leads and how the Spirit guides. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter 15. And we're going to read from verse 1. John chapter 15. We're going to read from verse 1. How the Spirit leads and how the Spirit guides. Now, we're going to talk about the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Ho it's the Holy Spirit. It's not the rental, it's not rental ghost. It's not some other spooky spirit somewhere else. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Because when it comes to the issues of the lead of the Holy Spirit, there are always two categories of people. There are people that had a very bad taste because something has happened to them and someone manipulated them. Someone did something bad in the name of the Holy Spirit. So they have that apprehension against teaching against the Holy Spirit. Then there are some of the people that are totally clueless and because they don't understand it, they just kind of avoid this kind of teaching about the Holy Spirit. So this month we're going to talk about how does the Holy Spirit, why is it important for the Holy Spirit to even lead us? And if he leads us, how does the Holy Spirit really guide us? That's how it is. How does the Holy Spirit lead? How does the Holy Spirit what? Guide. So we're going to see, lay foundation here. Um, I said John chapter 15, right? Maybe John chapter 5 first. John chapter 5. Just, just let me start from another you know, paradigm. Maybe it will, it will help people. John chapter 5 verse 19. So the Bible says this. This is what the Bible says. Then answering Jesus has said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing, referring to himself. The son can do nothing of himself. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ says, you don't understand. I can do nothing of myself. But what he seeth the father do, for the things soever he doeth, he also, he, sorry, let me say that again. Let me take it out again. He said, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever it doeth, these things also the Son, these things also doeth the Son likewise. Wow. It's amazing that Jesus will say these words because Jesus by himself is God and is all powerful. And Jesus began to share with us like this is why I do what I do. And he says the reason why I do what I do is not because I feel like. This, Jesus said, when you see my success in ministry, when you see my success in life, Jesus said something like, I'm guided into it. It's amazing. He says, I don't do what I think is important. I don't think what I think is essential. He says, I'm guided into it. This is phenomenal. He says, Jesus, why did you heal one and not heal the other? It's what I see my father do that I do. Jesus, why did you make this decision and not that decision? It's what I see my father do that I do. That's really very powerful. That he wouldn't do things by himself. He's going to do what he sees his father do. Very powerful. And let, now let's jump to... So, so when you look at Jesus Christ, I don't want to put that there. That the core of Jesus is Jesus doing what he saw the father do. So John chapter 15 now. John chapter 15, verse 1. And the Bible says, I am the true vine, and, the and my father is the husband man. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pauses. It's amazing how God has this emphasis on fruitfulness. He says, the one that bears fruit, he says, what God does is that he begins to prune it. He begins to purge it that it will bear more fruit. This is really amazing. This is really, really powerful. This is really powerful. So, if you are fruitful and God wants you to do better, what does God do, begin to do with you? God begins to purge you. And sometimes, you know, many people think, why did this relationship not work? And for where you are, the relationship is great. But for where you're going, God has to take away to make it better. God has to literally purge you. 
literally pours you. This is very powerful. This is really incredible. Because some people are asking the question, I'm doing well, but I know I can do better. How is God going to do that for me? God says that if you're doing well, I'm going to purge you so that you can do better. Are you the kind of person that God is purging you and you're fighting with God to hold back what he's trying to take you from? Are you the kind of person that you're holding back what God is trying to take away from you? He says it will purge you. So let's read. Let's keep reading. Now we say something in verse 3 that was very powerful. He says, I will pour you in verse 2 that you may bring forth much fruit. Verse 3 says, now you are clean through the word, which I've what? I've spoken unto you. So how does God pour us? God pour us by his word. How does God help us by his word? It's by his guidance that God pours us. By his guidance. So someone says, I'm doing so well, but I want to do better. And how do you do better? God says, the way you're going to do better is being led of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the reason why guidance is important is this. Guidance helps our development. That's what, that's really powerful. Guidance helps our development. Spiritual guidance helps our development. Everyone can be a lot much better than where they are. God, everyone, let, let me say it this way. In the kingdom, Growth is a design and an expectation. In the kingdom, growth is what? A design and what? An expectation. But the question is that in the kingdom, growth is linked to guidance. So Jesus Christ says that I want you to grow, but the way I'm going to grow is by pruning you. But how do I prune you? I prune you through guidance. I prune you by leading you. I prune you by teaching you. So when you really want to grow... I mean, look at the apostles. And when I say growth, I'm not just talking about monetary growth. Even this spiritual growth. When you really want to grow, God begins to deal with you. And he begins to bring new thoughts and new knowledge. And how does he do that? He does it by guidance. The question is, is, if you are not familiar with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, your growth will be stunted. Because there's no way the Holy Spirit can pass out the information, the revelation, the guidance he wants for you. So, you will, are meant to have growth, but you'll be stuck in an old version of yourself. L let, let me use this example. Can all the men in the, can all the, men in the choir come and, uh, you know, yes, and uh, some of the protocol members, would you please come? Ladies and gentlemen, what, what is this? It's an iPhone, right? It's an iPhone, right? Good. But the good is iPhone 13. It's an iPhone 13 right there. All right. So just take one. Just, yeah, I'm going to just, just take this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Watch this now. I just want to hold it straight. Just, just hold it to face us. Yeah. O what is this? It's an iPhone. It's just, it's just iPhone 7. Just iPhone 7. It's an iPhone also. This was the best phone of Apple that year. Yes or no? And this is an iPhone 8 also. This is the one. That they, I'm not sure if this one can do selfie. I think this one can do selfie. You know. This is iPhone 8. It's a great phone. This is iPhone 10. This is iPhone 11. This is iPhone 12. This is iPhone what? 13. Someone says, I want to grow. I want to show you something very powerful. How will God grow you? The question is that, where are you in your life? Watch this now. When iPhone released this iPhone 7, it was the best phone of that year. And that's how you are. But the question is that, with time, they did iPhone 8. They improved, did iPhone 10. They improved 11, 12, now 13. But the question is this, you are the iPhone. What version of your life are you stalking? The reason why is that, in God's scheme, you can be here. You can be here as iPhone 13, the latest of the latest. But if you're not careful, you'll be stuck in the iPhone 7 of your life. It's you. See, you know what I'm saying? This same iPhone, only that it's been upgraded, redesigned, upgraded, redesigned, upgraded, redesigned, upgraded, redesigned, upgraded, redesigned. But the question is this. You, what version of your life are you stuck in? When this iPhone 7 was released, it was a fantastic phone. 
You know that phone that can't do selfie? Because it was an iPhone that couldn't do selfie. Those days when you want to take phone of yourself, what do you do? You take the camera, you turn it like this, and take the picture, and you cut off your head, and you say, no, I didn't have you. And you say, I'm not so Excuse me, man, can you just take this phone and take a picture of me? Because we could not take pictures. Yes or no? No, talk to me. I don't like that. Yes or no? But what happened? Gradually, gradually, there was upgrade going from here, from here. The question is this. This is a question I want to ask you. Who redesigns the phones and change the iOS? The manufacturer. God says that I'm the one that needs to redesign and take you further. Will you allow me? So, many of you, some of you to allow, so, because many of you are here, you say, I want to do this. But do you know the thing? Your iOS is not compatible for 2022. You're, you are still living in 2015. That's where the iPhone 7 worked. And what you need to do is simple. How does God upgrade our iOS? How does God redesign us? God designs us by guidance. The way God does that. Spiritual guidance is God's technology of expanding capacity, of designing us, of changing our iOS. But the question is this, do you even know that God is trying to do something in you? Because you have not seen your future. So you think that after you move from 7 to 10, that this is the best of you. And God is saying, that is not the best of you. The best of you is in the future. The beautiful thing about our creator is this, he knows our future more than we know it. We need to allow him lead us so that he can lead us into the best places. But here you are over celebrating the iPhone 10 version of yourself because you have made some progress. And God is saying, no, 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 no. You should not even be at a 10 right now. We are at 13 right now. And you're saying that, how will I get there? And God says, the way I take you is really by guidance. Somebody say Hallelujah. Let me ask your neighbor, what version of yourself are you right now? Because this is version 22. Yeah, version, yeah, 2022. Some people are still living version 2015. And Jesus Christ said, the person that is growing, I will purge him. I will remove some things. I will redesign him. Why? So that he will be more fruitful. If you are not able to recognize how God is purging you, how can you respond to it? That's why he told the disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you. Listen to me. See, guidance is important for all around growth, spiritual growth, every kind of growth. He says, follow me because I will what? I will make you. Without guidance, without spiritual guidance, you can't be a disciple. Because the discipleship entails following. You can't follow what you do not know. Without spiritual guidance, you can't be a disciple. Without spiritual guidance, you will not be able to step into the fullness of God's plan for your life. And, and, and the reason I'm saying so is this. Do you imagine? See, think about it. What version of your life are you stuck in? Are you updated with what you're meant to be? Or you're stuck in the version of your life that God has gone ahead? See, God is ahead of you, but you're in the past. Glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, brothers, thank you. Thank you, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So, the question now is this. So, we began to talk about the fact that we need to grow. And the major thing I'm focusing on is not the growth now. It's the fact that God's guidance is the way he grows us. Someone say God's guidance is the way he grows us. Oh, yes. I love what I love. I love the Psalm twenty-three. The Bible says, "He restores my soul and He leads me what in the path of." So before He leads me in the path of righteousness, He walks on me. He restores my soul. First Corinthians three verse five. Oh wow, this is powerful. First Corinthians three verse five. Are you there? Maybe let's jump to verse uh, verse six. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 3 verse, verse 6. And we're talking about spiritual guidance. It says, I have planted Apollo waters, but God gave the increase. Watch this now. Verse 7 now says this. So then, he that planted anything, neither he that watched anything, but it's God that gives the increase. Does that not suggest to you 
that growth is not a function of prayer. It's a function of application of principles. Did you hear that? That growth is not a function of prayer. It's a function. Did you notice the constant there? It says, once I plant and Apollo waters, increase is there. It's saying that increase is consistent. If you can plant and water, the challenge that Christians pray, we don't plant and water. You are working on your capital. You are praying. Plant and water. You are working on your project. You are praying. Plant and water. He said, Paul planted and Apollo waters. And God does what? Gives the increase. Very powerful. Now, that's the first principle. That God will give the increase. Because God doesn't change. You see, when it says God gives the increase, you need to know, know this. The nature of God that God is unchanging. If he gave increase yesterday, he will give today. So, if you consistently do things that bring for increase, he will always give increase. But now, this is what I'm going to do because we want to tie this up into spiritual guidance. So, watch this now, which is very powerful. Very powerful concept. He said, Paul planted and Apollo what? Paul what? Paul what? Apollo what? There are two dimensions to things we have to do to grow. One is the planting and another one is the watering. What is the planting? Everybody look up here. The planting is what you do that nobody can see because it's done and covered up. The watching is what you do that everybody can see. Can, can you give me some water? Give me some water. Give me some water. If I plant a seed right now, you will not see because it's covered. But let me water. Come, my brother, come, come, come. Yeah. Yeah, watch this now. If I water him, what will happen? You will say what happened to you while you wait. But if I planted him in the soil, will you see him? He says, I'm giving the water also. Praise God. Praise God. Look at this now. It says there are two conditions to go. Poor planting, apple watering. What does it mean? Planting is what you have to do that nobody can see. Watching is what you do that everybody sees. The challenge is that most of us, when we're trying to copy people, what we copy is the watching. We don't copy the planting. Because the planting could not be seen. So, we see them, my brother, come. We see the brother being wet. We see him being wet. You know, we see him wet. We see, we see, we you look at me wet. You know, you look at me and this brother is so wet. You know, this, this brother is so wet. You look at me, this brother is so wet. You know, I say, ah, I know, I know the kids to the breakthrough right now. When she was going to get married, she just did this and this and this. Listen to me. What you have seen is wet. What I planted, you cannot see. Because what I planted is inside of him. The challenge with most Christians is this. When we're copying people, we copy what is what they wet. What was watered, not what was planted. And we waste our time watering where there's no planting. Are you hearing me? This is the challenge of most Christians. So, and unfortunately, when people give testimony, the truth is this. What they tell you is watering. What they don't tell you is planting. The Samuel sons of Skiba, they were dead. Paul was casting out demons. They looked, looked, looked. Mm. They, saw that, they saw what he would say. They would say, yes. He would stand up, point at the devil, and say, I address you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you devil, the master of the world. They said, that's fine, let's go. They went to go and see the man of demon possessed. They say, I address you in the name of Jesus. The man said, ah. He said, Peter, I know. Paul, I know. He said, he didn't say, he, the devil did not say you said the wrong thing. He said, your watching was correct. You said what you should say. The problem that when we check in the spiritual realm, there's no root inside. He said, we see that Paul was planted. We see Jesus was planted. He said, who are you? When it comes, and I'm saying this, when it comes to growth and development, there's that which is sin that you do. There's that which is nothing that you don't do. The major thing is that once we want to copy people, because all we see, because, because you can tell his words, so you can copy witness. But what he did, the planting, you cannot see. One of the things that is planting is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You will just see, ah, do you know as soon as she moved to Lake Admiralty Road, as soon as she moved to that road, she just moved from 10 million to 100 million. Hey, ah, that road sells business. I'm going there. I hear. 
You've seen watering. You have not heard planting. What you didn't know was that she was instructed. So you not go to the road. You used to borrow money. You go to the road. All of a sudden, one month, you are looking for, one year, you are looking for rent to pay the next year. You don't say, I don't know why it's not working for me. Were you planted? Were you planted? No, you were not planted. You were watered. You were watering what was not planted. You now wonder why the result is not there. Are you hearing me? One pastor came and said, ah, he said, this is your morning prayer. I said, ah, everybody's joining, everybody's talking about it. How are you doing it? I said, he said, because I want to start my own. I said, that's good. I said, were well, you commanded to? If you were not commanded to, see, these are the secrets. You, it's a planting. See, we don't say this, we are planted and we water. They said, no, 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 I think it's a good idea. I've seen it work. No, no. It work does not mean it works for everybody. Are you here, somebody? Thank you. Uh, you said that. Uh, 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 how did she find her well, husband? She was going to a lot of birthday parties and wedding parties. She will now wear all these boobs too. You know, say, ah, is that how she found? You know, some, yeah, yeah, you know, you, 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 you say, her own booty was small. My own will be short like this. Even pants they will see. You, they will, they, I will cut. Even they should see everything. Let them see everything. I don't mind. Let them just marry me. You go. In some of these people that marry you, job is people that will carry you, they will just carry you. You don't wonder what's going on. Were you planted? Ah, as soon as she changed that church, I to this church. She found husband. That's it. Husbands are there. <laughs> you will just change church. They will shake you. Welcome for coming. As soon as you join the church, the husband will move to another church. Because the Bible says, it's those that are planted of the Lord that shall flourish in the courts of our God. It says, it's those that are planted by our God that shall flourish in the courts of our God. There are two dimensions. It's, it is a planting and there's what? A watering. Now loan is very accessible. Any small thing, let's get a loan. Is that what God told you to do? They will soon be sending your name everywhere. Do you know Akin Fagboromi is a debtor? He's a terrible man. He doesn't owe people. He does this and this. He will say they want to destroy me. They want to destroy me. But the question is, they'll say, God, why are you embarrassing me? And God says, He said, Hey, but, but God, the person this other took loan and he did well. That's why I also took loan. And God says, Do you know what he was planted? You want to marry like your sister? Do you know what she planted? Because this is a challenge. The challenge is that. There is a planting and there's what a watering. The watering is what we do on the outside. So you'll see someone do a, a, an ad, a social media campaign. They will do all sorts of things. You know, all those kind of things. But it's not working. And the reason why is this. There's no planting. That's why when you see businessmen, you know, some of you say, hey, everything let's move abroad. I just feel bad. Let me tell you something. Read the Bible. There are people like Joseph, until they move to Egypt, they will not explode. Read the Bible. But there are people like Isaac, if they dare move to Egypt, they are stranded. You say, we're both mates. See, don't you understand, Isaac was the grandfather of who? Of Joseph. The same lineage, but not the same destiny. In fact, Isaac wanted to go to Egypt like his father Abraham. God stopped him and said, don't. No matter how blessed it was, if you had tried it, his destiny would have been destroyed. Limited, literally. So, when we're talking about spiritual guidance, one of the key things we're saying is this. What is the spiritual technology that God is going to use to grow me? How is God going to guide me by himself? Me, as a person. How is God going to guide me? And I'm saying that those things... The Spirit of God will begin to lead and guide you. And when I'm talking about growth, it will be very wrong to limit it to just finances or business. Even spiritually. How would God begin to grow me? And let me tell you how guidance, guidance works for me. And uh, Jesus Christ said it. He says, whatsoever I see my father do, that's what I do. I have a way to pray. And I'll share with them on Wednesday. Basically, what I do is that all the things I do, all the things I'm involved in, I divide them into 14 areas. And I have a prayer structure. 
The 14 areas are there, and you can also copy it. In fact, some of pastors have asked me to send me my, their prayer structure. It's 14 areas, the things I do. There are seven days in a week. I take two things to pray about every day exhaustively. And when I pray, my first prayer is that not not do this. I have the goals I want to set. When I pray, my first prayer is praying in the spirit. You know why? Why am I praying in the spirit? As I'm praying in the spirit, I want to see what God is doing in the area that I'm praying about. All right. There are two kinds of people, though. There's one that says, Father, take and bless. There's one that says, Father, I've come empty. What have you blessed? Let me take it. There are two different things. You know, when you say, Father, take and bless, you are still trying to convince God to be involved. That's not... See, there's one that says that, um, let's do business and make money. There's one that says, where is money? Which business has money inside? Let's get the money there. Are you getting me? Oh, that's weak at the back. Are you getting me? So, when you understand this principle, very powerful principle. Ah. So, when I put in the Spirit, and let's look at it again. John chapter 5. I, I want to show you the quickly. Because the, when you understand this as a businessman, there will be no struggle. Though. It's one thing. See, before you pray your goals, God, what are you doing? I was listening to one of my friends. One of my friends said, you know that I knew that there was an energy spike. He said, the reason why is I'm not in the energy business, I slept the other day as I woke up in the morning. The Lord just told me there will be an energy crisis in the world. That is what he's doing. John chapter 5 verse 19. Look at it again. Are you there? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily what? I say unto you. That the son can do, but whatsoever I want. He said, this, you know, see, this, is, this is where business people miss it. They have the plans and say, come, come and bless. Mm -mm. You ask God, what have you blessed? Let's plan on it. Many people are single here. Next thing. Hey, I'm delayed, I'm delayed. Who told you you are delayed? Has he, have you seen your marriage? Has he told you it's your time? You are the one that concluded you are delayed because your friends have gotten married. You, this is married, that is married. Your mother said you are late and you wanted, I'm delayed. As the one that made you open your chapter. And because you don't know that, instead of you to wait for your time, you'll end up with Ishmael. What is Ishmael? I explained Ishmael to you last week. Ishmael, see, Abraham was promised to have a son by Sarah. A son by the power of the Holy Ghost. When they could not wait, Sarah said, we can't wait again. There's a servant of mine, Hagar. Go and sleep with her. And Hagar got pregnant and had the child called Ishmael. Ishmael is the natural way to produce what the Spirit has promised. That's what Ishmael is. So, you don't know if you are delayed. You say, hey, I'm delayed because the pressure. You, you went for one wedding. And as you went, as you were dancing, they say, hey, hey, hey. Ah, he said, my God. You know, and you saw them just kissing the guy. Say, hey, won't like kiss. Oh, my God. My body just went, shuka, 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 shuka. You know, hey, oh, my God. You know, next thing, Father, I'm delayed. Who know? See, you don't understand. Delay is a concept of time. Yes or no? If you don't know your time, you cannot know if you are delayed or not. If you don't know what your time is, how can you know if you are delayed or not? Jesus Christ told us, he said that, me, Jesus, he says, what I do is what I see him do. Because of that now, you are delayed, you now go. I'm delayed. Just, oh yeah. Ishmael, bah, get one guy, get one girl, you start dating. By the time the person finishes with you, your heart is broken, torn, shredded, shredded, hot, you know, right now, scattered, you know, bamboozled, you know, what another, I don't know what again, demolished, you know, is demolished. Watch this now. Ishmael has done his work and gone. Isaac now shows up. And this white people have delay. When Isaac shows up, you are not in a state to love. You by yourself, not destroy Isaac. The other one, they destroyed you. You by yourself, not destroy Isaac. You've done Ishmael business. When the Isaac business shows up, there's no capital. Because Ishmael has carried away money. You hear what I said? You have done Ishmael business. There's no... Ish, you, when you had money, the money was worrying you. Hey, I have 15 million now. Oh, 15 million. What business is there to invest in? Ah, you know, have 15 million. You, you were just bubbling. You were just bubbling. Because as money has entered your hand now, bro, you could not, you know, you just, hey! You put the money there, you lose the money. Ishmael, you put the money in Ishmael. Isaac shows up. 
please put the money here. There's no opportunity of making big money. But there's what? There's no money. Because Ishmael has taken money away. Oh God, why? God say you. Are you getting me? This is a power of leading. This is a power of leading. Because in leading, God will help you know your timing, the process. You'll have some kind of patience. Even me that I'm a pastor, I've seen things. I, I, I mean, there was someone that was going to get married and the brother confided him. He said, Pastor, by this time, I'm going to ask this lady out. But please, don't tell her. I said, that's fine. And just two months to that time, she just got distracted. She just jumped on somebody that was, ah, hey, ah, I just said, hey, if she could just wait. Glory to God. Just know the Bible says the righteous will not be in the haste. Just know that the Bible says what? The righteous will not be in the haste. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Look, look at Job chapter, chapter 29. Very powerful. These are very powerful spiritual concepts today. Very powerful. I mean, I'm going to get him blessed. Say, I'm getting blessed. That's so weak. Lift up your two hands and say, I'm getting blessed. Very powerful spiritual concept. Job chapter 29, verse 2. What leading does to people? <laughs> I said, your growth is limited by guidance. Look at Saul. As soon as Saul stopped following God, what happened? The throne was taken from him. As soon as Jonah stopped following God, the boat was going in that way. Look at Job. Job speaks about the days when he was following God. Job chapter 29 verse 2. Job was trying to tell us the secret of his own success when he was very successful. Job chapter 29 verse 2. See what it says. All that I wear as in the month past, this was when he was successful, as in the days when God preserved me. Why did God preserve him? What did he say about it? He says, when his candle shined upon my head. That's direction. And by his light, I walked through darkness. He didn't say there was no recession. He didn't say there was no inflation. He said, but right in recession and inflation, there was light. Glory to God. Listen to me. He didn't say that there was no inflation, there was no crisis. He said, right in darkness, the light was upon my path. Where I should fall, I will not fall because I could see. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. No wonder Job was like this. No wonder the Bible says he was the richest man in the West. Why? He says that by his light, I walked through the darkness. You know what that means? Some of you are in depth right now. You can walk through it by his light. I walked through it. I didn't die there. Darkness, I walked through it by his light. What makes you walk through darkness without being afraid? Light. Kaya. Sila. <laughs> what makes you walk through darkness without being afraid? Light. You're going through that tough time in the company. And there's no iota of fear. Because although there's darkness everywhere, you can see. Why can you see? There's light. Where does light come from? Guidance of the Holy Ghost. This is my most prosperous year. Amen. So I say it's a terrible year. The reason why is that I'm not saying it's not terrible, but I'm walking by light. So my prosperity is not based on the darkness around me. It's based on the light I carry. With that's why if you don't know the Holy Ghost, this much you must know Him. Ah, lift up your hands, everybody, Father. Let your light be clear. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let the light be clear in my business. Let the light karato kata e kata. Let the light be clear. Let the light be clear. La kora matabrati. Let the light be clear. Everybody stand on your feet for just one or two minutes. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, let the light be clear. In this darkness, help me to walk through light. Oh yes, Lord. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you can have your seat. See the effect. Hi. 
He says, when by his light I walked through darkness, I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. He was talking about guidance, leadership of the Holy Ghost. He said, what will happen? He said, those days, when that was like that, see the next effect, verse 20, 26. When I, when my steps, when I wash my steps with water, he was talking about prosperity. He said, people are washing their feet with water. He said, me, I was so blessed. I washed my steps with butter. Look at the next line. He said, and the rock poured out rivers of oil. Rock that should not give out anything. He said, rock was pouring out oil for me. See the rock. Why was rock pouring out oil? Why was he walking in, washing his steps with butter? He said, because the secret of the Lord was upon me. I was being led of the Spirit. I was being guided of the Spirit. I was being led of the Spirit. I was being guided of the Spirit. Hey, when you are being led of the Spirit, what is a rock? A rock is a place that does not deliver. A rock is a place that is dry. He says, when you are led of the Spirit, you go to the rock and the rock will bring out. He will bring out what? Rivers of oil for you. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Say the rock will deliver oil for me. They say it's not working in Nigeria. Ha! Boy, in this Nigeria, you'll make the first 100 billion, sir. You'll make the first 1 billion, sir. You'll make the first 10 billion, sir. You'll make the first 100 billion, sir. Why? Because, because if this is a good scripture for all of us in Nigeria, he says, the rock poured out. Why? I was here by commandment. Rock has to deliver. That's why guidance is important as a business person. It's not what everybody does. It's what I'm led to do. Praise God. That's what I was telling you. I have areas I pray about every week. And when I'm praying, I'm not, see, I'm not saying, Lord, I have my plans. But the first thing is that, Gramaskete, what do you want, Lord? Lord, show me. Open the calendar. Lord, pull the curtain. Let me see what you're doing. Lord, pull the curtain. Let me see what you're doing. Lord, pull the curtain. Let me see what you're doing. Lord, pull the curtain. Let me see what you're doing. He will just tell you one day and say, get ready for marriage. He said, I don't have a boyfriend. He said, that's it. He has pulled the curtain. Your time has come. But when he has not said your time for marriage, you're buying a ring. Are you not going to finish yourself? You are going to look, you are going to say, I'm looking for a wedding dress just to be looking at. You know? He will just tell you, begin to save. Why? Because you are going to buy a company. Because that's the cotton. Hey, guidance of the Holy Ghost. Look at what Job said. Job said, I mean, this is amazing. If you read, if you read, go down. Job said, when I spoke, everybody did fem. That's a realm. That's a realm. When you enter conversation, once you finish, the negotiation is finished. Because grace is upon your mouth. Guidance. So let's begin to round, the, round this up. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. This one is very important though. This one is very important. It, it's good to have plans. But it's it's better to be led of the Holy Spirit. When was the first case of leading that I saw where the Holy Ghost led someone? I was seven years old when that happened to me. It didn't happen to me. It was maybe seven or six. Seven or six, I couldn't remember. I can't remember how old I was, but that experience stayed with me. And I'll tell you what happened. I must remember, maybe about six, six. My older brother scored not in Lagos, but in the boarding school. And those days, phones were very restricted. You know, there were no law phones in the country. And this is exactly what happened. This is very powerful. I remember this story quickly. I was getting back. The driver had come to pick me from the primary school. And I was just getting back. And my mother was going to see my brother in the boarding school, which was unusual because this was a school day. So normally you don't go on a school day, you go on the weekends if you want to visit and it's always first Sunday of the month, visiting days. And I said, mommy, what happened? And in my mother's words, I'm going to speak, this is how she calls this prophet that um, 
in their church. She said, Alagba Delegate, they call them Alagba. He said, Alagba said, I should go and look for your brother that he's dying right now. Ah, he said, so I'm going. He said, he's dying. He said, as I'm talking to him, he's dying right now. Ah. My, mother, my brother used to be asthmatic, so we told me it was the asthma, so my mother had kind of prepared asthma drugs. By the time my mother eventually got to my brother's school, which was outside Lagos, my brother was in the hospital. But it was not asthma that he had. They were staying in the day in, in, a, in an outside school hostel. So certain students of that school had been climbing this palm wine tapas tree. They would stone it and drain the palm wine. And you know how students are. So when they had done this, he had been trying to catch them. Eventually, my brother and his friends were going, and because they were wearing the same school uniforms, he thought that, I mean, it could have been my brother that did it, I'm not sure, but this story to us <laughs> was that he didn't do it, that he just picked the school uniform and chased them. And because he was asthmatic and could not run like other people, he eventually caught him. And guess what? The man just took his cutlass and went for his neck. Pwah! Like here. Until today, my brother has that mark here. He said, that's how my brother fell down and began to bleed and shake. And his friend says, let's carry him to the hospital, to the hospital. So when they carried him, they were, the first idea was to save his life first before we even look for who will go and call the mother. But why they were in the hospital fixing that? My mother was there. So the doctor said, excuse me, who called you? He said, the prophet called me. When you know these things, you know these things. So this is not, you know, the, he, said, he, said, he said, I was told to come that he's dying. He said, I thought it was asthma. I bought asthma drugs. I didn't know it was real dead. And the doctor said, if he had stayed because of the thing he had torn short, they had to, he said, they would have died. When you understand this thing there, you will see death and just walk the other way. People wonder, why didn't you go this way? He said that, I saw that. Because his light will shine in darkness. They will wonder, you will sit deal and say, I will not take this deal. I don't know. Let me, let me, if you join next level prayer and the things happen in that nation, you understand. I'm telling you, you, you were there next level prayer when I just said that. I said that in the US, I saw like an hurricane come. This and this and this and this. One of the members said, Pastor, thank you. He said, that prayer was for me. He said, five minutes to my house, that's where the hurricane stopped. He said, five minutes to my house, that's where the hurricane stopped. I'm just telling you this in this the power of being led. The day that building in Koyi broke down, who remembers the prayer point? You were here next level. I said, Some people are in project and the project will destroy them. I said, Let's pray that no project that you will not enter a project that will take your life. That was the prayer we prayed that week. Two days after the project is going to take place, the builder was in the project, it crashed. If you had just joined the prayer, maybe we'll have been out of it. This is. This is when God begins to show you. It's one thing to say, Lord, do. It's another thing when God pulls cotton. This month is about God pulling cotton. Yeah. Pulling cotton and showing that, hey, this is the way to go. I mean, I said this story here, I, I told I've said it many times. One of the times we were going to develop Naira majorly, I had a dream when we the conference. And, you know, when the conference was January, it was in a conference. And in the conference, you know, um, I didn't know if we are doing evening session that we had just finished because I was staying in this hotel near the mainland church. And I slept and woke up. And when I woke up, I thought, so, till today I'm not sure if I saw a vision or I woke up, I slept again. I just knew that um, I had a conversation. And in the conversation, the person I used to trade, that I used to buy dollars for me, told me, he said that, Pastor, I told you, that dollar will go up. You didn't buy. See the new price. So. And he told me the price in that conversation. It was not like a dream. You know why I say it was not like a dream? Because I picked up my phone and called him again. I said, ah, you told me that dollar was going to go up and it has gone up. So what's the price now? I was asking what's the price. He said, no, I didn't call you. I said, you didn't call me. I said, hold on. I picked the phone and checked. I said, you didn't call me. I said, when I had this conversation, I was in the spirit. That period, all the naira that I could get, I made converted to dollars. In about a month or two, naira just moved by I think 100 or 150 downwards. Why? Guidance. 
Let me tell you something. The more guided you are, the less mistakes you make. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, many Christians are spiritually blind, which is not a good thing. Because the difference between you and other people is that you can see. He says, who has, is as blind as my servant, having eyes, cannot see. What's the use of you coming to church and your ears are so deaf and you can't hear? You have children, you cannot even tell what the Lord is saying about any one of the children. You have children, what are you raising? They are not pigs. These are children with destinies from heaven. And the Spirit has not told you about any of them what it shall be like. When Did you hear what Rebecca said? He said, in my womb there is a battle. And, and before they came out, the prophet said, the, they didn't have scan, no. They couldn't tell if they had twins or not. So. The prophet told her, he said, you are carrying twins. And the lesser will suck the, the older. Ah! How did he know? Prophetic download. This is when God, oh my God. Listen to me. There's four deal. Ah, he said, fuck it. There's four deal in the spirit. When God will open your eyes and you are in things and things. Virtual. <laughs> Yeah. Virtual reality, yo. when God opens your eyes, you are inside things. Sometimes, when you read the Bible about how the prophets saw visions, they could not even explain. There was no word for what they saw. They only described it because the English was not available. Did you read Ezekiel? When Ezekiel prophesied nuclear weapon, I showed you when I did the study of eschatology. Ezekiel did not say nuclear weapon, but what Ezekiel described. The only thing that can make it happen was nuclear weapon. Ezekiel said that he saw that while men were talking, their skin was peeling off their body. That they were peeling their skin. That's the work of nuclear weapon. Uh, if you want to play church, I wish you, I wish you the best. Just come. Go sing, go sing, go praise that Lord. You will come, nothing will change. If you want to. And that's the problem we have. The reason why we have no results is that we have a lot of people that play church. They've not got into Christianity. They are, they, they are saying I go to church. It's not going to church. Oh. This game is for those that have entered. They say, I'm not born again. Born again is not a price. It's the beginning start. It's the beginning of the race. They say, go to say you not go. Come from this service. I'm busy. How will your spiritual senses come alive? Are you hearing me? When something wants to happen, God says, give a sacrifice. You don't know why you're giving sacrifice. Three days after, something has told about in your favor. And God said that was what I was talking about. Praise God. I said praise God. So let's begin to close this. Does God speak to everybody? I believe so. I believe that God speaks to everybody. Christians and non-Christians. The reason why is that there's no way anybody that's not a Christian can become a Christian except you hear the voice of God. Only that the same way the U.S. belongs to everybody well, it really belongs to U.S. citizens. Yes or no? Exactly. God speaks to everybody, but the primary gift of hearing God belongs to those that are his own. And I'm saying so because there's a lot of teaching that says when you sin, God stops what? Talking to you. Is that not true? He said God puts you out of fellowship. But that's not true. When Adam sinned, who spoke to Adam? Adam or God? Huh? God. When Cain killed Abel, who came to talk to Cain? I'm even telling you from the Genesis. So. When Saul sinned, God sent the prophet. When David said, God sent the prophet. How come? Where did you get your own Bible from? That is ignorance gone on rampage. Why do you need to hear the voice of God? Is it not when you have made a mistake? Someone says to me, okay, how come I'm not hearing God? Most people don't hear God. And, and this is the question. What, how come I'm not hearing God? Most people don't hear God because of what? Anxiety. And that's why if you notice something, anywhere you are very anxious, <laughs> you will not hear God. Why? Isaiah 30 verse 15. Let's put it on the screen quickly. Isaiah 30 verse 15. Are, are you getting blessed? Say, I'm getting blessed. Say, I'm getting blessed. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. Let's put it quickly. I want us to, let's put it quickly. What does it say? say For thus yet the Lord wretched wants to go, the Holy One of Israel, in what? Returning and rest shall ye be saved. And what? In quietness and in confidence shall what? It says, it says, it is in the place of confidence and quietness shall your strength be. Did you notice something? All the time that 
Elijah got depressed, the mighty prophet could not hear again. He was anxious. He was, and that's why when you're so particular about this pregnancy, this, this business, this contract, this money issue, you will not hear anything again. Because this is what happens when you're anxious. This is what happens. Let me show you something. Uh, can you hear that? Where's the drum? Are you there? Can you hear that? Remember what Jesus Christ said? Jesus Christ said, just hold on, slow down a little. Is the drummer there? I'll tell you when to go. Just be playing. You know, I'll tell you when to do. Jesus Christ says, I'm at the door of your heart and knock. What did he say? If any man would hear. So, it can be knocking and you're not hearing. Watch this now. It's knocking. Can you hear it? Okay, let's play. Can you hear? Can you hear? Did I stop knocking? No. God did not stop talking. The noise on the outside dwarfed his voice. God did not stop talking. The noise of your mind, the noise of your friends dwarfed his words. So the reason why most people don't hear God is that there's too much of noise outside. And that's why sometimes you must know the steel and know that I am the Lord, the steel. Glory to God. Let's do it so quickly. She was when you first service. They were there first. Towards the end. Okay, I don't want someone to. We, we just gonna, let me just call someone from uh, someone at the back. Who's at the back? I just want to call someone at the back. You know. Who can I call at the back? A man, a woman, maybe a woman at the back. So just someone to me. Anyone shut that can suggest someone to me. Tokumbo, were you in the first service? Not at all. Okay, come. Yes, at least I know Tokumbo. Because people, people like, they feel comfortable here. Watch this. It's a good thing I want to give to you. It's pounds. So you've not seen this illustration, right? Okay, this is four notes of pounds. One is fake. Give it to me. Give me the one that is fake. That one, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you know what you're doing? Sincerely. No, sir. No, you don't know what you're doing. You're just guessing, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Why don't you know what you're doing? Because you don't spend because pounds. Because I'm not used to the country. Because you're not used to this. Good. Thank you. So because she's not used to pounds, she cannot find which is real or fake. The reason why you can't know the voice of God is that you're not used to it. You can't identify if it's your mind. If it's real or fake. That's the reason why. So, so when somebody says, is it my mind? Is it my emotions? Is it this? Is it God? Is it a prophet? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Watch this again. Then you roll it again. Which is it again? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because it's all guesswork. See, the way you know the voice of God is to expose yourself to the voice. If Davido was singing on the other side, some of you will know it. Is that not true? How will you know Davido? Because you've exposed yourself to his music over and over and over again. If the president of Nigeria, President Bwari was talking, you will know it. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. But question, did you know that voice 10 years ago? No. But the more you expose yourself to what happened, you need the voice. Yes or no? How do you expose yourself to the voice of God? The first way is this. The voice that interprets the Bible to you in Bible study is the voice of God. If you know the voice of God in his word, you will know his voice out of the word. That voice that interprets the Bible to you is the voice of God. If you can know that voice, but when you don't read the Bible, you don't know the voice in the Word, 
So when he speaks without you studying the Bible, you cannot know it. And the way it works is that you need to expose yourself to the word. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, which version of yourself do you want to be? You can be iPhone 7. You can be iPhone 13. What will take you from here to here is that the designer will have to change your iOS. It's going to change a lot about you. But the question is, how will it change? By guiding you, by leading you, by directing you. Shall we pray? Thank you.